to my 20 year old self you should have broken up earlier no, I can't just say no it's crazy you don't understand that you are not in my shoes we're a little bit more jealous that the Gen Z's have it this way speak to your 20 year old self you think you hot now right Gen if you're in your 20s and you're in a relationship don't settle for this person this is your daily catch up mm. Oh, I thought John is scrolling TikTok during working hours. No, please, let me finish this video at least. Interesting, man. What are they talking about? No, so you know how I have eczema, right? So I've been going down this huge rabbit hole about ceramides. Oh, you mean the fatty molecules that are important for holding our skin cells together and help maintain moisture? You read my mind. For people with a healthy skin barrier, ceramides make up about 30 to 40% of their skin's topmost layer. But did you know for people with eczema like you? or sensitive skin, like me, they have much lower levels of ceramides. Oh, no wonder we're more prone to skin dryness and irritation. Anyway, so I was watching a TikTok about Curel's award-winning Curel Intensive Moisture Facial Cream. You mean Curel, the first company to introduce ceramide care technology into their products created by researchers who specialize in sensitive skin? You read my mind, again! Actually, I watched a TikTok explaining how Curel Ceramide Care Technology helps to fill out your ceramide reservoir to shield it from external irritants and protect your skin from dryness all day long. And I heard that this cream is pH balanced with no added alcohol, so it's suitable for everyone. Or as the Japanese might say, <laughs> Why are you using TikTok? It's working hours. No, we, we are, are just sharing how the Curel Intensive, Intensive Moisture Facial Cream is conveniently, conveniently available at the National Skin Center, Watson's, Welsher, BHG, Fair Price, and all major online platforms. So, so get yours today and be well 365. That's their tagline. And on to the episode. We. Jared, how old are you? 33? Dan, wow. how old are you? 32? Shams, how are you? 29! Lies! Edison, how are you? 29! And I am also 25. So... <laughs> Lies. Lies! So today on the panel, we have everyone who is in their early 30s. Nice. 29! And 30. the prompt of the day, what is one thing you would tell your 20-year-old self? Oh. Oh. Wow. Okay. I think we start with the 29-year-olds. Oh. Okay yeah. la, so um, <laughs> <laughs> hmm, well, <laughs> what I want to tell my 20 year old self is to invest and value relationships. Oh, I thought man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's so crypto, guy. Buy, get into the crypto. for oh, JP. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because Wisdom alert. for the most part, right, in my 20s, right, that was the one thing that I didn't focus on. I focused on everything else. But the one thing that I didn't pay attention to were my relationships. And I now am, have realized that there's so much value in that. And I have tried to repair some, I've tried to do a lot of things. I, even the concept of how to maintain friendships or how to strengthen and deepen relationships is something that is still, uh, that I'm still learning now. So mm, what would yeah. you have done differently? Like if you could turn back time now. Similar to like plants, right? You actively need to water them mm. in order to keep them alive and to keep and to grow. But I mean, okay, maybe I don't know enough about plants. Maybe some kind don't need. But like cactus. cactus. Actually, cactus still need. So actually, I do know more cactus. about plants than you. <laughs> cactus, is, cactus, cactus is like your childhood friend. Like water once, then like. Ah, <gasps> correct. Got different kinds of plants. Yeah, yeah. Different amount of water. But the thing is, I just assume that they will always be there, mm. healthy, and continue growing, even if I didn't pay attention to them or put in effort. Uh, succulent. That was the mistake. Friendship. Yeah. Mm. So learning about exactly this actually but is fake, a perfect analogy. But fake plants are forever. So fake friends. Ooh. This analogy not working anymore. <laughs> as long as you got stop, money to buy stop. fake plant. Mm. But they will never, there. they will never flower. They will, they will never, never grow. Bloom. Yeah. The beauty they of won't life. Grow with you. So to my 20 year old self, my advice would be, I think for some of the relationships you had, you could have, you should have broken up Ooh. earlier. Ooh. You should That's have learned. Okay, okay, okay. Like, I think my 20 year old self would have benefited from knowing when to call off mm. a relationship. Call it quits. Yeah. Mm. Instead of taking so it. Learn to say no. Uh. In, uh, a bit. No, but. <laughs> Deliver the final it. blow and then you're out. Yeah, because <laughs> I, th I, think, I think what happened is like, uh, my relationship. What's a relationship? <laughs> it's no, not no, 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 it's not. <laughs> it was not. Okay, I think I can relate because I think for all my relationships, right? Also, like I kind of had a sensing earlier on already that it. it I know this 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 won't work out, one. Mm. but deep down, right, it was my lack of understanding of what a relationship should be that caused me to keep thinking that, ah, yeah, maybe can lah, or there's something wrong with me, ah, that or, or things can change, things can change. So I kept staying in it, even though it, it wasn't the right person. It's hard because you finally have someone who is willing to have sex with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenties, <laughs> twenties. It's like, oh, if I break up with this person now, right? <laughs> 
No sex. Who? <laughs> <laughs> no, and in your 20s also, everybody's kind of like getting attached. Yeah. yeah. And then so like, oh, everybody in relationship, lovey-dovey, then you also, you don't want to be the one person that's like <laughs> single. I, I, think you, I, think, <laughs> I think you can really tell because, <laughs> and I think one question that you can ask yourself, right, or maybe this just applies to the really bleeding hearts through romantics, lah, is that I remember asking myself, will you marry her? Wow. The answer was no. Eh. Mm. But then I carried that on for like two more years. Why? Yeah, why? why? Because I just thought I, in your twenties, you think that you still have time to change yep. it. Uh, but then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you think that, okay, like maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel and all that kind of stuff. But then looking back after the relationship is over, right? You wonder about like maybe relationships that have passed you by. Mm, like mm. Opportunity cost. Yeah. Perhaps might have been other romances that who have taken your life in a completely different direction. And then now they are just, wonders. Uh. Yeah, mm. I, I I honestly don't think that there is a formula for this, right? No. So, <laughs> some people might meet the right person when they're like 19 or whatever. Some later, or but, <laughs> but your 20s is going to be a time where there's a lot of change for mm. yourself. You, you, you still don't know who you are yet. And so, the probability of really meeting that one person that will stay with you for life is Statistically lower. Uh, it's actually quite related to, to the advice that I wrote down, the one of three, which I sent to Sherps who did the report, um, which was to find equilibrium quick. Whoa, like, wow, wow, wow. Balance. I think, so, what is, what, what? or like a balance. I misunderstood what was important for her. I felt like I didn't want to leave the house and go meet my friends and leave her alone in my place mm. because I felt like I didn't want to leave her alone. So then I just told my friends, no, I can't hang out. And I didn't tell Ned that my friends were hanging out. But eventually I realized, wait a minute, like, Actually, Ned also values her own time. Right? Like she also will just be watching TV or whatever. And then there were opportunities for me to just go out and hang out with my friends. So then when I realized that I actually told her like, hey, you know, actually this whole time I've been saying no to my friends a lot because I didn't want to leave you alone at home. And she's like, how, huh, what the f***? Go, like go and hang out with your friends. No wonder lah, I thought you got no friends. Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> she, she didn't say that. Oh. Yeah, 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 but she like. Did. <laughs> 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 so then I realized like all I needed to do was to have had chatted with her about it. Mm. And then, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Don't so know. Talk, because you assume, assume that she just want to spend. It all. wasn't just about spending time because like, I think it was just more, I didn't want to leave her alone mm. at home because I thought Oh, that, you clingy little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe rather I assume that she was clingy when she actually yeah, yeah, yeah. isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that happens also, right? Because yeah. you go through your honeymoon phase with somebody new and all that, then you you get used to a new kind of like regimen. Yeah, mm. exactly. But the regimen is kind of off balance. I don't think mm. when somebody get into a relationship in their 20s, right? They are going to be like, I'm going to be balanced from the start. <laughs> yeah, no, of course, yeah, no, no, yeah. I love you. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Equilibrium but, is but once a week is more than enough. Yeah. You know? Which is why the advice is not to like always have equilibrium, it's to find equilibrium, but find it quick. La. Like, mm. Don't I mean, wait four years. La. Yeah, don't, don't, don't wait years till mm. you like realize, shit, I have this partner that I really love, but I've lost all my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what's the cost? Mm. Oh, do you think you can achieve like true equilibrium because I feel like now at my 30s or so, right? It's just getting harder, in fact, to like uh, achieve equi equilibrium. I do think that we all have the capacity to, it's just managing it. Mm. So like similar to like the addition of a child, you know that, yes, maybe you're going to have to spend less time, but you know that you still have to spend time with friends, with family, with any other commitments. Yeah. Uh, and even with yourself also. So <laughs> having that- it, it, It's exactly so right. so hard. It's though. exactly right. <laughs> Um, so like I know, for example, like once my 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 kid comes, like I can't I can't be gaming every night anymore, which is something that I do every single day, and so it's going to take away a huge part of my identity. No, but mm, knowing now. what it gives you, mm. then you know that like how much do you need of it to feed you, right? So yeah. for example, right, if it's just considered your own time, then there's categories under me time which you need to to prioritize for so, or if it's a social component, right? With that one group of friends that you always play with, yeah. then you know that you still need to take care of that. You cannot just cut it off completely. Yeah, perhaps. But I think it's also like knowing the the time and place for for it. Like. I think, yeah. Like, like just going back to your point about like still struggling to find equilibrium. I don't think you can ever find pure equilibrium True. or like balance. I think it's the pursuit of fine tuning all the time. It's almost like a like like a like a sound rig where you're just always <laughs> like tweaking here, tweaking there and realize, oh like little adjustments. There's something though. new here, okay, just a little bit here. So how do you know when you are equilibrium? You are off. Oh, when yeah. it's not balanced. Since the, the advice is this, right? Try to mm. find balance as fast as possible. What are some indicators that your life may be a bit unstable or unbalanced and then okay, I need to do something about it. You're feeling tired all the time. 
it means that because you only have a finite <laughs> amount of time and that's really the limit of the resource that you have uh, amidst all the things you're pursuing, right? It means that you're trying to fit too much within mm. a day, a week, a month, mm. a year. I think if you're always anxious or you feel like there's impending doom happening and not to analyze dreams, but if your dreams look scary, you're most likely stressed about something, which means that equilibrium is also off. I feel like if your family or friends ask like, Oh, this again. Ah. Hey, if you have not heard, we just created a new daily catch up community. Yes, join so us. So please join over there. We will be using it. Ah. Hopefully, y'all can help us test run whether this episode gets cancelled or not. Uh, be part of that conversation where we'll be sharing exclusive content, bloopers, and uh, conversations that we really think some people should see, but not everybody should see. <laughs> We're going to try and uh, organize meetups as well because some of y'all have uh, commented that y'all hope that y'all can watch the episodes live yes. and or be a part of the show. And so we'll be having all that discussion over there. So please join. So don't miss out. Scan the QR code or click the link in the description box down below and we'll see you. We can't wait. We cannot. Absolutely not. <laughs> in fact, our KPI depends on this. What will you do? What will you be doing in the community? I, me? Yes. Oh, I'll run polls for you guys. Oh, Interesting questions. Correct, yes. correct. And um, um, what else? Really, we should have planned this. Uh. Yes, we should, we should have, have. We should have. I, I blame John. Say that we, we're going to wing this. I, they join already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh wait, that's Dan. Dan uh. You can kick Dan out of the chat. Yeah, Dan, he, he needs to stop typing. Sir. He's the only person. He's, He's the, the only, only person, person typing. Join us. <laughs> join Dan, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jared's here. Hey, what's up? Hi. Jared has joined the chat. So this is a sick, it's a company chat. <laughs> it's a sick it's six of us. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say I'm always hanging out with my friends. Oh. And then let's say my family members say like, oh, you're going to go out with your friends again. Ah. And it happens like a few times. Then I would think like, hey, actually I'm spending too much time with my friends. Mm. Or it can be the other way around. Like if I'm- You're hanging out with us again. <laughs> ah. No, if like I'm spending so much time with my partner that sometimes your friends might drop a little diss and hints at you yeah, like, like, or is it your- boyfriend again, yeah. then you will think like, eh? Wow. You, you will like, it should it's be a signal for so you to think like, eh? So aggressive helps. <laughs> no, but because they don't want to chuck too much and tell yeah. you what to do, right? Mm. But then they might be like, what you mean four times this week already? Eh? You cannot meet us one time this week, man. Or you like, know? hey, back from the date, uh, I haven't seen you in so long. Eh. Passive yeah, aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Or like, wow, finally. Then you know like, eh, something <laughs> Very That means you're aggressive. saying like, eh, you really spend too much time with your partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about if yeah. you have seven days a week, right? Like how about say you take all the balls that you have Monday, Tuesday, and then you Wednesday, Thursday, dedicate Friday. at least one day to each No, ball, life doesn't work. Cannot cannot no, <laughs> and then like the balance, yeah, you distribute. <laughs> la. Cannot then be like, like eight things out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's eight things. No, it cannot be like your friend is only always available on yeah, Tuesdays, your boyfriend is only available on Wednesdays. I, I do think there are certain things that you can schedule regularly like that sex. can be fixed. And then there are other things, possibly, right. possibly. The True. So dinner. Couple yeah. Time. Know the things that you can fix and schedule to mm. and then try to make sure that you don't miss out on those. Mm. And then there are the others that you can like move around kind of and can and be also flexible. Equilibrium Much more refined version. <laughs> yeah. Equilibrium looks different from people to people. So. True. Yeah. I have one like advice, right? That I think can uh, apply across <laughs> all like wow, this aspect be of good, yeah. <laughs> So it's up. really to know that it's okay to say no because whenever you say yes to something, you are essentially saying no to yourself. Wait, you are saying no because you are not saying yes to yourself? No, I'm saying- <laughs> What if someone says, do you want a million dollars? And then you, no, no, <laughs> no I need to I say yes to When myself. you say yes, you are saying no to yourself. Yeah, when I meant yes to in, other people. Yeah. Oh. yeah, but what they're saying, they want to give you money. No, not that way. No, you way. can no, say yes. Okay, so you give can us, say yes. Can you please give us an example of why, why you have come to this? For me, right, personally, I have like maybe- <laughs> my family environment was not perfect. And Whoa. and also I think I mentioned in previous episode that I crave external validation very much. And I think one of those <laughs> is my par validation for my parents. Mm -hmm. la, and because of that, okay, I don't enough. know how to say no. For example, my mom expects me to sacrifice a lot like for my family. So for example, like if my first paycheck, my first full job, mm. uh, full job, full time job paycheck, right? She expects me to zero it out and pour it all on our family. Like our- like, right. Uh, groceries, Zero it out. Uh, like meals and mm -hmm. everything. She expects that of me. Okay. And to me at the time, no lah. I still want to have my own savings ma. She doesn't understand that she, and I can't say no. So you ended up giving ended, yes, all your, 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 your first salary uh, first to few, your family. Yeah, first but few But just your first paycheck or did it no, continue? No, it continue, it continues yeah. for Ooh. like a year. And then I, and I was in a lot of stress at that time because on top of that, I have to pay for my other like 
stuff uh, like I go out my friends if mm. I want to pay for like my school stuff I have right. to pay out of my own pocket what? okay, mm. yeah. okay. But what's the that alternative though because you said that you don't have a choice like your mom is saying you have to do this yes. so then if you are saying like, be okay with say no mm. say no more often to other people if you said no in that situation what would have happened like, I don't imagine your, your mom just suddenly being okay no. with it yeah. mm. so my counsellor he was saying like just say no he just, oh. just tell me to say no. Like the Monopoly deal cut. La. Yeah, exactly. Then I tell him it's like, no, you don't understand. Cut. I can't just say no. Then she just asked me, like I was going crazy. I remember like at a seat, right? On the, on the seat mm. opposite him. I said, no, I can't just say no. It's crazy. You don't understand that. You're, don't, you're not in my shoes. You don't know how, how stressful it is to say yeah. no. Yeah. And he said, no, what, what is she, she going to do? You tell me what she's going to do. Mm. So then I explained to him, this, this has happened many times where I tried to say no and she would do this, do this, do this, slam the door, um, potentially just break things at home. Mm. Mm. And right. then he said, okay, and be comfortable with that law. You need to protect your own. You need to protect your own self. Right? This counselor quite bad ass. Yeah. No, okay. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say quite bad. At first, I thought he was. <laughs> he doesn't need to deal with the consequences. Yeah, he, he's just telling you. <laughs> the <laughs> the <laughs> best things ever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're a bit childish. Actually, he's just a student. <laughs> <laughs> no, he went no, the he's much older. Then just do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, but but that is so destructive. <laughs> like as opposed to like. Even though it may not work, wouldn't the correct advice be to speak to your mom and um, allow her to see from your point of view oh, why this already. is important for you to say no? I try already. Then move out. Ah. <laughs> No, I okay, you're yeah, just as bad. No, no, no. Is that not yeah. better than creating a home scenario where people are throwing stuff? Like yeah, for a counselor yeah. to say, just say no, oh, she's going to throw stuff and, and act out and then you go, yeah, deal with it. Like that's, that no, doesn't he, sound like- His concern was as long as I'm not hurt, like physically, like if she's not like, trying to hurt me, then Ooh. it's okay. But emotionally, yeah, but you don't know how things are going to escalate. What right? it may not result in that. I, I guess, but at that time, his his advice was very helpful for me. Okay. Like when I made that switch, right? Wow, I felt so powerful. Eh. Mm. Uh, okay. like, yeah. He was trying to empower her, lah. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. so. Fair enough. No, because yeah. it's like it's Fuck not up. up to her to control what her mom feels, ma. She's mm -hmm. trying to. I think the counselor is trying to get her to like make her own decision based on mm. her own terms instead of making it because of someone else's reaction that you cannot control. What you can control is your own decision making. Ma. Yeah, but I think that's also an extremely selfish like point of view because what if you live in an environment where you have other siblings, you also have your dad, you have an environment where everyone's having a good day and mm. because of something that you just want to do, now you have created a very, very destructive like home environment that sure, it's, it's down to your mom but you had the responsibility to start it or not. I got another example for Shams. Mm. Just say no. Your own experience? Yeah. Okay. So, Consent. but this time is, I think it's easier to relate. It's like friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's family dynamic, yeah, very different. Okay, okay, but I think okay. this one is like, most likely a lot of people have, is when you're in your early 20s and you like to go clubbing. Yo! Cannot relate. Then, okay. because last time I have this group of friends, they will keep asking me to club. So the first few times I go, cause you know, like socialize friends, and yeah. all. Mm. But then after a while, it's like every week. Then I'm damn tired. But I feel like if I say no, right? Then they're like, hey, why you like, no, not on no, so on? No, like, why you? I'm cool. I did say yes at that point of time, but then it got to a point where I was super tired. Then I keep creating excuses for myself. Like I, I sick lah, I, I no money, that kind of thing. When I could have just say like, no, I, I just don't feel like going. Mm. Then when I grew up, I realized like, I should just be honest and say because like it didn't like up my social standing or it was isn't like I got the best night ever all those kind of thing ma. Mm. Like, I feel like if someone say I just don't want to go you don't need to be like hey why, like, why? until you force people right to like lie about it so then how do you discern when you are saying no out of fear of putting yourself out of your comfort zone to experience new things and when it is truly just something that's not for you I think you at least try once and then mm. you come is to a better once conclusion enough or twice. I think I think once is like enough experience for you to like- to see whether that's your scene. Yeah. Yeah. But what is the perspective of once? Because right, to you maybe it's going to club <laughs> once is the once, but maybe to some other people, it's going clubbing every single night for six months as the once. How do you gauge when something is not for you? Until you feel that I it doesn't bring you, you satisfaction anymore. Yeah, if you're when, you're, when you're doing it for other people. Remember this advice for your 20, uh, 20 year old self. Uh. When you're 20, yeah. you really think you that's can true. understand this? That's why we are telling them to- <laughs> I say, get faced. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Your prefrontal cortex haven't fully developed yet. Yeah, there's this video that I watched on YouTube. I think this guy named Scott Galloway or something. I think now he's in his 40s. But one mm. of the advice for like 20s to 30s, right? Is that to dare to speak to strangers, keep making connections. 
No, keep making connections because you never know me. what you'll get out of the connection. Yeah. And that's so important. And you are more likely to be able to do that when you're in your 20s, 30s versus when you're much older then you're more kept to yourself. But maybe to go to a, maybe a deeper like level of the advice, right? Because it is great scenarios that you guys have pointed out, but maybe it's not so much about the no and the yeses. I think something that you brought up was that so much of your validation comes externally. Yep. You need that external validation from your parents. And maybe it's more about learning the tools needed so that you find internal validation as opposed to external validation. Middle chair dead, everybody. Middle chair dead. If y'all don't know, when he sit at the context. corner, he disappears. <laughs> but when he sit in the middle, suddenly, oh, wise man. I'm so sleepy. Right oh, wise man dead. Oh my God. It, it, it's quite interesting because I, I just saw this uh, IG reel of a guy like, okay, like I get a lot of parenting stuff now, but he was basically saying whenever his like toddler <laughs> comes over to him and says, hey, look at my drawing, right? He has to stop himself from saying, great job. This is the best painting I've ever seen or like you're fantastic. Oh my God. Mm. Because your kid is always going to get used to wanting that external validation. Mm. Mm. Every time the kid says, this is my painting. He goes, how do you feel about mm. it? And then when that kid basically says, I really like it or I think I could do better, he then validates her feeling. Wow. Then but she knows that her feelings is valid and she learns how to be able to evaluate things for herself. Thank God for TikTok. Thank God for TikTok. <laughs> oh, I so if the child says, I think not very good, then you yeah. just say, yeah. Oh no, 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 no. But then like, okay. Process so the feeling. Exactly. Why don't you think it's good? What would you do differently? <laughs> okay, okay, we simulate, we simulate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So then is, then is the parent, okay? Okay, okay so you have a child. Five years old. I have Show him. Show him you made this. Look at my cup. I made this cup. So how do you feel about this? I like it, I like it, but I think I can I can make a nicer one next time. Why do you say that uh, you can make a nicer one this Just time? Just tell me it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> tell her it's nice. <laughs> Shit, I really felt on the spot. I didn't know what to say. Oh, you know. Know. Oh, oh, I'm two years old. Yeah. You're two years old. But you can't speak very fluently. Cup, 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 nice. I love cup. I love cup. Mm. Why My you cup. love cup? Why are you My talking? <laughs> it is how you speak oh, to Oh, by the way, you actually, you shouldn't, nice. shouldn't you mirror. Shouldn't, you shouldn't do the mirror thing. Nice. Um, if you say so. Well, that is not, no, no, then no. Then you say, Daddy, don't give me real. attitude. <laughs> Daddy, it's always nice. Then you're only two years old. There's this plenty is of time for you to improve, child. Shut and up. So, Shut up. <laughs> wow, you're damn good mediators. Yeah, yeah, yeah but no. the child oh, says yeah, shut up. Maybe I should get it. Shut up, shut up. Why shut up? <laughs> <laughs> what is shut up? No, but then this doesn't make sense because my need for validation, right, mm. is not because my parents always tell me good things, but it's because they didn't. Ah, yeah. so you crave yeah. something that she didn't have. Uh. Yeah. I think, Speak to your 20 year old. Okay, self. 20 years. Hello, 20 year old Alison. I think reply? it's fun to get drunk, but don't do it at your workplace. Oh, shit. <laughs> what happened? Let's I hear disagree. It. Story time. Time. Story time. I think, okay, I think getting. Okay, like, I feel like when you're in this. a young company, right? I think it's fun to get drunk show at okay. like a company party. But I feel like it's a canon event wow. that wow. if I see a okay. younger person do it, I cannot stop. I'll be like, okay, last time I dropped out was my. Oh my god, oh, what was he? What is it called? Supervisor. What? Oh, scary. Oh, yeah, technically, so it's <laughs> You so an intern. Yeah, and then one day, I don't know why, we decided to, we OT a bit. Then oh. after that, they had to go to like an event. Then just nice, I was OTing also. Then they asked, hey, you want to come? So then I was like, oh, okay, I go. But then they were drinking. Then I thought like, wow, I cannot be like the first time so I hang with that. I don't drink. Like, it's like so uncool, right? So I decided to like drink this honey gym bean thing. Huh. Which oh. after this <laughs> incident, I never drink again. <laughs> oh shit! Wow. So, whiskey, right? So I was like, ah, okay, I'll try. Cause I, I never reached like dr drunkness before, you know? Mm. So I don't know my own limit. So I was walking and walking. <laughs> I was feeling them woozy. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, I damn woozy. Then I don't have to be lame. Uh, like, I can't vomit I don't from be them. Lame. Oh then I like, then they, <laughs> when I saw the opportunity when they all in a circle talking, then I was like, oh, wait, uh. then I just turned to the side of the bush then I, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then, I back. then they're like, hey, you okay? Nah? <laughs> you think no one noticed? Yeah. <laughs> no, then after that, I then scared like I cannot convert to full time after that. <laughs> 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 because it's that embarrassing because someone is my supervisor. So every time I meet him, right, I'd be then Paise. Mm -hmm. But then lucky like if your supervisor is understanding. Wow. And cool. Oh, in front of the National yeah, Museum. <laughs> It was oh. a very kid, I remember. Lucky got grind in City Hall. I killed the bush. Yeah, or Robux. The Jason is a next level move. Yeah. Just nice that company, I think it was like, 
understanding that everybody's young, then it's just like, okay. No, I damn scared. Patience. I <laughs> damn scared because I supervisor role, right? <laughs> but then was. everybody young, right? Then yeah. I party, I drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the next day, I wake up, I'm scared, then got photos. I'm just a hugger. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel when you rise up in the ranks, right? like intern, like never mind. You yeah, know? intern, and, never, and most, mind. Intern you, never mind. When you low rank, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Which when you high rank, right? Then suddenly like, you'll be like, cannot drink anymore. Yeah. Cannot drink, cannot drink. Must yeah, really yeah. like force yourself to you be must be professional. professional. 10 wow. p.m. go home. Oh, it's the other way around, yeah. Now, mm. looking back, right? Mm. In your early, in your 20s, when it comes to career and work, should you go crazy at a party and is it okay because you're all still entry level? Yes. You're still young. Um, I, I think you need to show that you are someone who knows how to have fun. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that, but how? How to yeah. do it in a healthy way? If you're in a young company. La. So <laughs> no way to stop. No way to say no. So so really drink no more drinks. very minimally, but enough for you to be able to mind yourself to fake your your oh, highness. That's what I mean. It's not it's not faking it, but you get to a point right where like you are tipsy enough to go, maybe I'm more drunk than I actually am. And then you can like force yourself to like, actually have fun, but you're really having fun. Like yeah, you're yeah. doing right Sometimes now. Sometimes I get like, extra drunk, right? Just so I can get out of drinking uh, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but uh, but then it's like, oh wow, you're still a fun person. But then after that you can recover when when the night has yeah. like slowed down, you're like, oh, that was good. Ah, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I, yeah, I'm okay. I got, I got a trick I do. You just take one sip, one real sip, then the rest, right, just drink green tea. Then you always pretend to refill your drink and then mm. cheers and then you want down the green tea, want down the green tea, but people bad. won't really know. I used to force peel myself, but like- <laughs> Oh, oh that's, uh, that's generous. Like, but like, 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 no finger kind. Like, I don't know, for some reason, I just have to go like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can get, okay. yeah, and then everything just comes out, and then you sob out immediately, and you go, okay lah, I can do one more drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, the yeah. vomit already, then you can revive. <laughs> this is such shit. This is such shit. We've been giving yeah. such shit advice. This is really bad advice. But Honestly, right, if you are in a young company and you're an intern level, just go have fun lah. I think it's no. Fun. Get the vibe of the place and yeah. make sure that somebody yeah. more senior yes. than you is worse. Just like yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> right. whatever you do, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. You just then, find the balance. Like you see the yeah. worst person and the most least drunk person. If you see a supervisor making out with one of they are junior exec oh, yeah, 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 yeah. company. Uh, okay. I, I got information. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just start videoing, blackmail, you will rise up that company very, very quickly. So if anybody gossiping about you the next day at the pantry, you just go over and say, hey, you all got see this or not? <laughs> and then they start talking about that already. No, I, I was an intern at like, the boss right of the company it was someone that I really respected. Like I, <laughs> when she talked to me, right, I very intimidated. Kind of like mm. I'm sorry, so I can't look at her in the eye and, mm. and talk like kind. Cause one time I drank so much right that you I don't know what I was doing right. Then she took a photo of me and posted on Insta on her Instagram. Then ever I didn't know until the next day. <laughs> then I'm like, oh my god, that's the most embarrassing shit ever because she said like this is what happens when you are lightweight at a party. <gasps> oh, oh, and she's so influential. Oh, 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 so what were you doing? I don't know, I was just Sleeping? like, it was a blur photo of me like laughing or something, like smiling. Like, you like, are the uh, face of lightweightness. Uh, but oh. yeah, that was embarrassing. But that was the only thing. Uh, no, so. but it means that she's taken notice of you. It's true. Because I was rowdy, I guess. Yeah, those are very like creative people, like, create very creative souls. Yeah. Mm. For Wait, so get drunk at a party or no? No, I mean, just trust your battles. Trust <laughs> your battles. No, I think don't, okay to get drunk. don't drink to a point where you cannot control yourself because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, you're still in a professional <laughs> setting. Yeah. So yeah. I think you still need to be able to have your inhibitions intact, but have fun. Don't be the guy that is just sitting in one corner and not doing anything. Yeah. And like if, they say, if they say, don't worry, just drink right. Take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, a, like a literal pinch of salt. Honestly, <laughs> an office party uh. is an extension of work. It's the social component of work. Yeah. So you need to know how to be social there and score social points yes. because that increases your value when you go back the next day and for the rest of your time with that company. Yeah. So it's your yeah. opportunity to make friends and speak to people that you otherwise would never have yeah. in a more relaxed setting that isn't about work. Exactly. Oh, Sleep. 20 old self, please. Your physical health, right? Oh, I agree. There are so many things that mm. I've Regret one of them you. is physical health. You think mm. you're hot now, right? Wait 10 years. <laughs> no! <laughs> no. <laughs> Every time I see the 20, like young 20 year olds, yeah. right? Then they're like, like all hot and <laughs> shit. Then they like, they think like we all like fat and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, you just wait, like, you just wait 10 years, right? Your metabolism died. No, I don't think, I don't think you cannot be hot. I think it's yeah. just a lot harder. Yes. But health wise, there are a lot of things that are irreversible. Mm. So you have to be wary of those things. So like one of them right. is, for example, smoking. Yeah. When, wh what what smoking does to your lungs, right? Is it like, like, I can't remember who was talking about this, but it actually kills like the- The lung cells. 
the lung cells, meaning that based on how much you smoke, a your percentage cat, of your lungs yeah. will permanently not function anymore. You can't get it back. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no more receptors right. yeah. really. Yeah. Like little, little mm. things like that. Or for example, if when you're young that time, uh, you want to drink all that kind of thing, right? Wow, your liver. Your liver or goodbye. How am I alive? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And my MMA gym, quite a few of my, my the friends that I've made there, they all used to represent Singapore in some kind of sport. Right? They were athletes. So their body, right, will kind of forever retain a certain kind of right. like shape, man. Right? Yeah, versus like the uncle, the uncle body, right? I go there no matter how hard I try, right? I don't have that base, like that, that, that foundational possible, physique already. Flexibility, mobility, right. all of this. Yeah. Mm. I think harder already. Like once mm. you start at 30, right? Like how to get the, the muscle shape already, you want. like a bit wonky. Correct. Correct. Yeah, but, not there, really. but not impossible. But not impossible. Oh, yeah. Like slowly, yeah. Oh, it, it's, it's a harder. lot harder, lor. Yeah. 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 But also, like getting Please. fit, right? Getting physically fit, right? Also gives you like confidence. Like confidence in not just how you look, but also generally how you deal with life, right? You get that, like, how do I put this? Say if you, for example, you have a rejection today, right? You don't, it doesn't feel as bad because your body feels good. Like, I don't know, is this, there's some science behind this, trust me. I was reading somewhere, right? That let's say before the run, right? Or you're like, wow, you hate it so much. But after you run, you feel so good, right? The rest of the day, right? Makes you feel like, you know what? I've done something productive for my body and it's fine if I didn't have my favorite chicken rice store is closed today, it's fine. You know, for example, like that. Like the smallest things, you'll feel good about it. Hey, no, 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 no. I, 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 the example I, a bit off from the- I, 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 I believe, point. but like, I can imagine now people, right? If they want to like reject somebody, it's like you have to check, hey, did you go for a run today? It's like, oh, okay, here's some- I Bad never news. felt good after a run before. <laughs> oh, okay. I always feel like I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh. <laughs> on the floor, I face you, I like. <laughs> <laughs> oh when I go bathe right, I like holy shit I don't I run again you should all go for a run you just shoulder you're you pushing yourself too hard my god no run slowly run slowly no I run them slow already like my 2.4 like 20 minutes eh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Like, that is so unnecessary <laughs> no like uh, okay. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> wait, you no know, I you really walk, walk. Like. no I, I run and walk run and walk but I, I just cannot breathe and like, I cannot keep up the stamina but I tried for one month every day I run right the 20 minute because 16 minutes but yeah, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. still bad no, no, no 16, 16 minutes okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. pace is 10 minutes eh. it's progress it's okay. the yeah, point you is can the see the yeah, yeah, but 16 minutes yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the only time I felt good after <laughs> a run right is when I enjoyed this 10k marathon because I was thank god I'm never doing this ever again that's the, the only time it's I was like it's like a like, checkpoint la. I also never wanna, running again yeah no I also want to add that I think a lot of the Gen Z's, right? Or the younger kids now, the people who are in their 20s now, they all getting it right, yeah? They are going to the gym, yeah, they're yeah. eating yeah. healthy, and they are also learning, right, to spend on things that enrich their life, not things that make them look good. So like they are cutting back on like luxury goods, because yeah. they understand that actually all this material thing, right? No value one. Huh? The mm. real value, right, is in- Yourself. Yeah. So I actually they don't need advice from us. We are sorry, we don't know why we're doing this as well. <laughs> yeah. You know what I know? I think right, their, their TikTok algorithms are really, more really better. good. It's more better. More better. The millennials algorithm is full of shit. Mm. Right? It's doing oh, the gloom, memes. right? Yeah. They got all the Sam Sulek out to help them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I disagree. Sam Sulek. Yes, Sam Sulek. No, Sam Sulek. No. Oh, the Sulek. bodybuilder. Oh. That gonna break up then he, oh. Whereas we had Mike Cheng. Six pack shortcuts. Given that it's 2024, what do you think the Gen Zs are getting wrong? As much as I think they're very creative and very open and they're getting a lot right, I think they're also one of the most entitled like generations ever. And they don't know any different. I don't blame them. But I think they 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 feel like they're in a position to request a lot out of like other mm. people and stuff. But on the other hand, I think it's for us to also recognize that every generation has something that the previous generation just doesn't get. Our parents' generation does, didn't understand us. And we feel like we were misunderstood by them because mm. we, we felt like we mm. knew better. Mm. And I think Gen Z's know better than we do in a lot of things and we just don't get it. And mm. I think that's fine. I think it's just about finding ways to communicate and for everyone to just like get along and, and work together in a productive way mm. um, that makes sense. I feel like we feel like a repressed Gen Z. What? <laughs> like, I feel like mm. if we grow up when everybody is like open to just share and like question yeah. things, right? Yeah. I think we'll be like Gen Z. Oh, but I think God in our generation, we are more like repressed. Nothing really is online. So you don't really get like experiences of different people, you know, mm. to make you like grow and like question things. You're just mm. like living in your own bubble and then talking to your said group of friends. Ma. But I think now it's like everybody feel like this one whole big, 
like chunk of people and experiences. There have there have been studies about this already, which is that we are the last the generation. Between generation. Oh, yeah. We are the Sandwich in between generation. generation. So we understand and know all the traditions of our parents' generation, mm. but we are in a time where in application everything is the Gen Z generation. Like yeah, yeah. Mm. And we so almost, we are kind of stuck. Yeah, I think it almost feels like we didn't have our time. And I think we are like more paranoid than Gen Z's. Because I think Gen Z's were, were brought up by Gen Xers. And Gen Xers were like adamant that we didn't want to raise our kids the way boomers raised us. Mm-hmm. And so they were a lot more open. And so now Gen Z's are super like empowered oh, and man. feel like everything. Exactly. Whereas we were the generation that was told, don't talk to strangers. And suddenly now we interact with strangers on a daily basis mm-hmm. online. Mm-hmm. And so we're like paranoid about so many things. And we feel like, well, I think we're a little bit more jealous that the Gen Z's have, this way for them and then we didn't get to like yeah. have it our way. I yeah. think the whole product of like being online, everyone can post a video is that it's created some severe main character syndrome. La. That's what oh, I've been yeah. like kind of identifying. And uh, we did talk about this in a previous episode, but uh, I think one thing that maybe Gen Z's can take away is that uh, you're not important. <laughs> like you have to acknowledge that in the grand scheme of the world, you are actually just a speck and like only a very small percentage of people are going to like change the world and all that kind of stuff. If you, and it's okay to not be important. So just, I don't know, maybe <laughs> not try to be the main character all the time. Uh, Alain, Alain, please like, clip that out. Let's yeah. go viral. <laughs> <laughs> Alain, Alain, how you were like, please, please, uh, let, let's not uh, let's not give advice. Let's not talk down to people. You just <laughs> went to school. Yeah. And you know yeah. what's yeah. Yeah. You don't be. <laughs> no, but I agree Shut that I, I think the best thing as a parent, right, to tell your kids is to to not tell them that they are special because mm. I think you create an entire <laughs> Unless generation. Unless they are. <laughs> ah, you okay. Yeah. Okay, Shane Gillis. Um, whoa. whoa. No, but yeah, I think I think the, the problem was that I think a lot of Gen Xers maybe raised their kids, the Gen Zs of today, uh, in a way that told them that they were extremely special, they're extremely important. And now if you have an entire generation of people who think that they are the most important, you're going to get 99% of people who are going to be very disappointed in their lives because mm. they are not going to end up being anything special. Um, and you get really entitled people who don't have the right to be entitled. <laughs> It's crazy, oh. It's like the life of Club. Uh. We grow up with Limbo Singh. They grow up with like Iron Man. Eh. What is Limbo Singh? Huh? Like their stories and their heroes and all that are completely different from ours. We are Pachu Kam, <laughs> who was made fun by his wife, Limbo who had a smarter <laughs> brother. <laughs> Limbo and like basically the main characters of our generation were the losers, yeah. almost. Yeah, yeah. Whereas they were brought up with heroes that were actual heroes. We love our Gen Z audience. We do though. We, we really, do. really do. And that's so important. If you're a Gen Z that's watching, can you leave a comment down below? Let us know what you want us to talk about. I think it'll be quite fun. Or what should we just stop talking about? Because we don't have advice. Because yeah. there's yeah. What is there a Gen Z that we can piece? have on this show? What do you mean, Denise? I mean, besides Denise, like, I guess. <laughs> that might be fun. Mm, I don't know who Gen Z's really. follow. Nicole Liu. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. If not, we'll see you in the next one. Adios. <laughs> yeah. You all got your phones with you? Yeah. Mm. Open it up and tell me how many photos and videos you have in your phone. Just like at the moment, like how many do you have? 6,735. 6,735. Okay. I got 30,000 photos. Okay. 30,000. 38,000 photos. Jesus. No, but it's from like all my, my years. So it's like four iPhones worth all of. All your years. years. Yeah. <laughs> Since iOS 1. Yeah, yeah, it's all in iCloud. It's all right, that, that's only my recent. 38, I try 000. to remove them. Apparently like the Gen Z average is like 40,000. Okay. <sighs> I didn't mm. expect you all to be so close, but to that. No, but because but we they live don't post longer. It, they just <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we have 10 years ahead of them. <laughs>